This is for the ethics review class at Parker University. The fifth of the licensing board rules that we're going to look at is for criminal convictions. Hopefully this is a rule that will apply to very few, if any of you, but it's a very important rule to be aware of if you have a history of criminal convictions or if you have any criminal convictions in the future. Of course, the best practice and best advice is to not have any criminal convictions. But unfortunately, some people do find themselves in situations where they have to uh, uh, deal with this. Uh, I will also tell you that if you are in the middle of a criminal prosecution, you need to be sure your defense attorney is aware of these rules. It may affect the kind of plea bargain that's in your best interest. Essentially, what the states have done is to make a policy decision to protect patients by prohibiting or limiting people with certain criminal convictions from practicing chiropractic. Generally, the application of these rules seems to be very uh, political. It varies quite a bit from state to state and can vary quite a bit from time to time, depending upon the priorities of the state and the, the current administration. To begin with, let's take a look at the Texas Chiropractic Act. Uh, Texas Chiropractic Act is written to provide the board with very little discretion, probably no discretion, in certain situations. If a chiropractor is convicted of a felony, a misdemeanor involving the assault offenses, a misdemeanor that requires them to register as a sex offender, a misdemeanor for violating court orders or family violence, or a misdemeanor involving violations of protective orders uh, based on bias or prejudice. In those situations, the chiropractor's license shall be, as you'll see here at the beginning, it says the chiropractor's license shall be suspended. It doesn't seem to give the board any discretion. The uh, um, act also lists out uh, various drug violations, violations of the Texas Controlled Substances Act, uh, violations for possession of inhalant paraphernalia, and violations of the Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Act. Upon an initial finding or an, or an initial conviction of any of those offenses, the state board is directed to suspend the doctor's license. When that conviction becomes final after sentencing and after all appeals are exhausted, the board is instructed by the legislature to revoke the chiropractor's license. Now, on the other hand, when you look at the regulations in the state of Texas, it appears that the board has a lot of discretion. The uh, uh, language in the regulation is that the board may suspend if there's a conviction of a felony or misdemeanor that directly relates to the duties and responsibilities of a licensed chiropractor. Uh, by the way, the rules also state that if a person is in prison, they are not eligible for a license to practice chiropractic. The board then goes on in the rule to describe the crimes that directly relate to the practice of chiropractic. Now, over the years, I've looked at this list many times, and I suspect that they have included virtually every possible criminal conduct or conviction other than possibly minor traffic offenses. Some of them are pretty obvious. People who've been convicted of practicing chiropractic without a license probably should not be allowed to practice chiropractic. People convicted of deceptive business practices or convicted of Medicare or medical fraud. Uh, then in number four on this list, the board goes on to list basically all of the crimes. Uh, and number five has to do with crimes involving drug offenses. And number six on the list at the bottom of the list is a starts off with other misdemeanors or felonies. It's essentially a catch-all clause so that if they happen to leave any criminal conviction off, they can then bring it into this list and consider whether that, how it affects and, and whether they should discipline a chiropractor with that kind of conviction. 
The key about that list is not to remember the specific items, but to remember that it includes essentially all criminal convictions. And then the last thing I want to mention about these rules on criminal convictions is to be sure you are aware that you have a duty to disclose to the state board. If you are applying for a license and you have a criminal conviction, even though you think it may have been expunged, or even though you think it was dismissed as a result of a deferred adjudication, you should probably disclose that conduct to the state board. You're better off disclosing the conduct to the state board and explaining how that may have happened sometime in the past and how you have changed since that occurred rather than failing to disclose it. If it shows up when the board conducts a criminal background check of you, then they will. it's much more difficult to explain how you just recently forgot to disclose that conduct than to disclose some conviction that happened in the past. The other piece is that if you uh, receive a conviction, chiropractors are required to disclose that conviction in writing to the state board within 30 days after judgment or if their license happens to be up for renewal at the time of the conviction, they must disclose it when they are renewing their license. I think the state board treats chiropractors very harshly when they fail to disclose these convictions. I think they are offended by the failure to disclose it. When they conduct criminal background checks, it's fairly easy for them to identify it. So it is important that you make that disclosure. Again, hopefully these are rules that do not apply or very few of you are going to ever have.